In the name of Christ who empowers us. Amen. Happy Pentecost. I love all the red. It just gives me chills. I just love it. So uh, we have today the story of the apostles and disciples receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. And they energetically go out and start proclaiming the good news of Jesus in all kinds of languages. And there's a lot of hubbub and carrying on. And, and, uh, and it's not a model that I think we're very comfortable with in our age. I think most Episcopalians would rather die than preach on a street corner. <laughs> so what is the Holy Spirit up to in our time? Does that mean the Holy Spirit isn't active because we don't get tongues of fire on our heads and run out proclaiming language in, in foreign languages the, the goodness of God? I, I love that metaphor of speaking in tongues. You know, this isn't glossolalia, the famous Pentecostal behavior where the language is unique to the individual and God. And they were actually speaking in languages other than their own that were intelligible to people who, of those different languages. And so the image for me is about being given the capacity to communicate with people who are different than ourselves, to appreciate, to communicate, to interact, to receive the, a new language, a new way of being in relationship with other people. So that the Holy Spirit does this great work of connecting us across barriers and making peace. And I don't mean peace as in the absence of conflict, but peace as in harmony of the different voices coming together in something that is larger and more beautiful, weaving us together in our diversity. This is my uh, ordination chasuble, and I love the way all the colors are woven together in their bright diversity. In John 3, the spirit is compared to the wind which blows where it will, reminding us that we are not in control of the Spirit, and certainly those first disciples were not in control of the Spirit on that day. And we do not corner the market on the Holy Spirit on Sunday morning. The Spirit is not located in this room only. But the Spirit appears in creative and unexpected ways in powerful ways. And while the spirit, like the air we breathe, is absolutely universal, God's Holy Spirit is in all places, in all times, in all people. Nevertheless, like the air we breathe, there are times when that spirit is organized into a powerful storm. I love that word organized. You know, to think of a tornado or a hurricane becoming organized. That seems the opposite of what they are, because they create such havoc. But that idea that the wind is collected in such a way, that the air is collected in such a way as to become a powerful <coughs> force, like an organ. The spirit is opposite, of course, in the sense that the spirit does not wreak havoc when the spirit is organized. But when the spirit comes together in those powerful ways, the spirit which is always present and with us comes together and, and organizes us in those powerful ways, then something wonderful is manifest. And so our job, I believe, is to become sensitized to become aware, to seek the places where the Spirit is organizing, where the Spirit is moving us collectively to manifest God's love in the world. And join, and join in wherever we find that, in the world, 
or in our community. That sounds kind of abstract, I realize. But I'm thinking very concretely. I, you know, for one thing, I think about music as one of those places where the Holy Spirit organizes us, brings together the different voices that are creative and bringing something out of nothing and creating harmony, literally creating harmony that is transformative to the heart and healing to the soul. We, that's part of why music is such an important piece of what we do here in our worship. It's not anywhere in the Bible that you should have four hymns and a Gloria and a sung psalm and, you know, in your worship. But our, our guts tell us that that process of making music is a way of participating in that creative, generative, life-giving spirit. Not that we all agree on what kind of music is most moving to us, but I think we all agree that move, mu music can be moving to us. And the other piece that it invites us to in worship is to recognize that this may not be my music, but it's moving somebody else. And that's another way in which we can participate in the work of the Spirit, by being patient with other people's music sometimes. I was amazed on Wednesdays and how the Spirit seemed to be moving in our, our little study group that meets on Wednesdays. Folks were really interested in learning about Islam and we kept kind of unpacking it and I kept saying, okay, now we're done and they'd say, no, no, we're not done. <laughs> We'd go on for some more and then they'd, and I'd think, now we're done, but no, they're not yet done, there's still some more. And in the end, we, uh, this last week, invited a wonderful uh, speaker, Anna Holmes Redding, who came and, and talked with us about her experience of Islam. And, and it felt to me like one of those Holy Spirit things where, you know, I couldn't have created it, couldn't have imagined it, but it just kind of blossomed among us. Where people became curious about how to connect with others. This is a time in our history where understanding is lacking and necessary. We have got to understand what is going on with this large community of faithful people who are very different from ourselves. How will we understand that? How will we connect with it? How can we make peace if we do not comprehend one another? And so this, this very lovely um, experience of these last Wednesdays has helped us to begin to reach out across those differences. And I think that that is a sign of the Holy Spirit in action, of helping us to understand one another across differences and learn to communicate, just like in that first story, putting us in a place where we are more open and more able to communicate with one another than perhaps we were before. This is the foundation for peace. Another place I see this powerful work of the Spirit in translation is in our current work together of rebuilding the church in Haiti, rebuilding the cathedral in Port-au-Prince. How amazing that is. I mean, here are these neighbors so far away, and all these churches all, through the, all over the country are uniting and making these small but generous gifts that together will rebuild. I mean... It's so wonderful that we can, in our imaginations, join with folks who are so utterly different than ourselves in order to create and recreate and reestablish a beacon of hope and light for the people of that country. So maybe it's time for a new view of evangelism that scary word that Episcopalians, despite a whole decade or two of evangelism, never learned to, to like. You know, I think that the, our dis-ease with it comes from our dis-ease with the idea of proselytizing and our fear that it will not be authentic, that we don't want to go out and just dump a bunch of platitudes on people or try to convince them that they need 
something that they don't perceive themselves as needing. But what if we saw evangelism as recognizing and attending to the good news of God at work in the world through the Holy Spirit? Recognizing and attending to those places where the Spirit is organizing us <laughs> into movement for good. And going to meet it wherever we find it, wherever the Spirit is at work, going to meet it, not assuming that it comes from us, but that God's Spirit is out at work in the world and that it's our work to recognize that work, participate in that work, celebrate that work, join that work, and invite whoever we meet to come back for supper afterwards. To come join us at the table, to be strengthened and encouraged and sustained to continue the good work that the Holy Spirit is up to, wherever the Holy Spirit is up to it. The last thing I want to say is that I've been speaking of the Holy Spirit as doing this collective thing in the world and us joining in. But, of course, the Spirit is also not just about organizing out there, but the Spirit is about transforming within as well, in transforming the individual human heart, which is why we do this renewal of baptismal vows on Pentecost. We are remembering that whatever we do, we do with God's help, meaning we are relying on that inner Spirit to give us the word to proclaim, the vision to see Christ in all persons, the power to love our neighbor as ourselves, and the energy to work for justice and peace. So this is the moment I invite you to stand, and we will proclaim again our willingness to be organized, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit for God's purpose in the world.